my next popular science book, the working title of it is Brain Food, which I'll almost certainly have to change the title of, but um, that's essentially Freakonomics uh, for the brain. It's all the really interesting questions that you won't find in another sort of neuroscience book. Um, it kind of got started, I wrote a, somebody asked me to write a guest blog post and on, on their site. So I wrote one uh, about will you perceive the event that kills you? And my argument is, you know, it takes a lot of time for signals to move around in the brain. This is one of the things I said in the lab is how fast signals move around, how far in the past you live as a result. So, you know, when you think the moment now occurs, it's already happened a long time ago because your brain has to take in the visual information, the auditory information, these move around at very slow speeds in the brain, it gets stitched together, finally you get a conscious impression that something happened and it's already completely gone. So your perception is like Saturday Night Live or any of these live television shows, which are not actually live, they're aired with a slight delay. And that's what your perceptual world is like. Um, so uh, I realized that if you were sitting somewhere, let's say a bomb went off, you would never know it. it, it would, it's like the footage would just end like at the final, the finale of The Sopranos, where the footage just stops, right? That's, that's what it would be like for you. Or, or another way of thinking about this is when you fall asleep at night. You know, you're sitting there, you're thinking about things and so on, and then all of a sudden you wake up the next morning and you, you don't remember a transition, you just were there and then you weren't. Anyway, that's what would happen if a bomb went off or if you got shot in the head or something like that. So that's nice that we won't have to experience our own death like that. Anyway, I posted this as a guest blog post and it just blew up. It became like the most pop it became the most popular post the guy had ever had on what was already a quite popular blog. So then I wrote another one uh, about, you know, other issues about what happens when people are in in experiences where they almost die, like, you know, their motorcycle goes off a cliff or they're sliding on the ice towards a semi truck or things like that. And uh, and one of the things I've been studying for several years now is about how time can seem to go in slow motion during these sorts of events. And um, uh, so I've collected up about 400 narratives from people now who have had these experiences of, of time seeming to slow down. And I've been able to extract general principles from all these stories about what actually happens when you're just about to die. And, and one thing that's uh, lovely is that people are not scared in these situations. So for example, David Livingston, the African explorer, um, was grabbed in the jaws of a lion and given one of these death shakes and it crushed his arm the rest of his life he couldn't use his arm very well. Um, but what happens is the, you know, so the lion was just about to kill him and his Sherpa shot at the lion and the lion dropped him and went after the Sherpa. So Livingston wrote about this in his diary and he said, you know, I was completely at peace, I was totally calm and, and that's exactly what happens to people in these situations. And so. Um, I wrote about this and one woman wrote to me and said that um, her husband had died some years ago because he'd on a hiking trip fallen off of a cliff. The cliff crumbled and he fell 400 feet to his death. And she said, I had always imagined that he must have been terrified the whole way down. But after reading the stuff that you wrote and so on, I've realized he probably was totally at peace falling and it made her feel a lot better. So anyway, I've just been exploring several of these issues, things that are... Um, well, they're just not, they're, just, they're more difficult to study. As you know, maybe I've, you know, I've set up experiments to put people in these situations, like dropping people from a 150 foot tall tower and measuring their time perception. I'm setting up a new one, which I can't talk about yet because it's, it's, uh, it's really cool. Um, but again, it's putting people in a situation which has to be totally safe and yet can induce these sorts of distortions of, of time warping.